Um, you know, really excited about what we've done, really excited about uh, our next speaker, obviously, Chris Lemma. Um, you know, Chris, is, as most of you may already know, um, you know, he's, he's a public speaker, he's a blogger, he's a WordPress and WooCommerce evangelist. Uh, he also happens to be the VP of products here at Liquid Web. So, you know, he's, Chris is a great guy. He's also the, the creator of, of the best business conference for WordPress professionals in Cabo San Lucas, Cabo Press. Uh, and for 25 years, Chris has developed and managed high performing engineers to build software products. So particularly SaaS products, but in a variety of B2B vertical markets. Uh, he's also spent the last 15 years coaching startups on product development and marketing strategies. So, you know, Chris is a, is a valuable resource that, that we have access to. Um, he's, a, he's an amazing guy in and out of the office and, and it's a pleasure working with him. So with that said, Chris, if you're ready, I'll turn it right over to you, buddy. I think you're on mute. Oh yeah, I sure is. Hold on. I'll help you. I got you. There you go. All right. Now, can you hear me? Yes, we sir. sure can. And can you see my screen and slides? Yes, we can. Awesome. So welcome. Uh, this is the last session. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. All right. So for those of you that are still sticking around and have been here all day, uh, I, I'm so glad you're still here. For the folks that are watching this on replay, welcome. And uh, we're going to end up by talking about networking. So uh, I have a little bouncy guy here that, no, I think it stopped or maybe it hasn't. We'll see. All right. Um, so you should see a screen that says the power of networking. Uh, I, what I want to do is I want to start by just telling you a few things that you already know right? Stuff that should be uh, boilerplate, stuff that you, you should be able to just check off and go, yep, I agree, and I know that, and I know that to be true, and I've internalized that in my life, my freelance business, my, my agency work. Networking isn't just for when you need another client, when you need another work, right? Um, a lot of times what happens is we get that LinkedIn request or the text message from a phone number we don't even recognize, because we haven't talked to someone in three years or five years and suddenly they're looking to connect, right? And you know right off the bat when you get one of those folks that, and one of those requests, you think they're looking for a job or they need some work to do, right? Um, I have folks that I've worked with in the past who it may be like four years later and then I get a, a you know, Facebook message, hey, how's it going? And I just know it's been four years, we've never talked and now suddenly someone's looking for a job, right? So you know this, this, it, it, it comes off super clear to anyone else. Networking isn't just when you need something, right? So that's the first truth. The second truth is the more people, this is just a numbers game, right? The more people who know what you do, the easier it is to get recommended, right? That's just, it's about, it's about saturating the market. It's about making sure that at least if there's one person who needs something you do, and they talk to five of their friends, will any of those five know you? Well, there's no way for that to happen if all you are is heads down doing your work, right? There's, there's, this, there's this underlying premise that we grew up with, which was you could just put your head down, get the work done, just worry about the quality of your work, and that would solve everything. And then we watched over time as lots of people that weren't nearly uh, as skilled succeeded. And part of the reason they succeeded was because they could tell a better story. They could, they could draw more attention. They could do things that weren't related to the job, right? In order to be um, selected, you know, for the work, you need to be in the room, right? You need to be physically present. And that means someone has to bring you in the room. And that means someone has to know that they ought to bring you in the room. And so at the end of the day, networking is an understanding of the fact that you need to saturate a market. And the more people that know what you do, the easier it is to get recommended for the work, right? You know that already. I know that you know that. I'm just reminding you, all right? Now, here's another one you likely know, but sometimes we don't apply it to our business. When you develop specific expertise, it makes it easier to be remembered. I want you to think about this real quickly. If I were to say to you, um, who do you know who answers all your SEO questions? 
you, you might have a name pop up in your head. Or if I said, who's the best designer that, that you love, right? Or who's your favorite author that you like to read? Or who's your favorite blogger? Or who's your favorite public speaker? It doesn't matter what I ask, you will likely, for many of those things, have a name that pops up in your head. And it's likely because the name of that person is the one that you associate with that specific expertise, right? If I'm thinking about SEO, I have a name because every time I talk to them about SEO, they have answers for me. And so they're my trusted resource, right? You have likely a trusted dentist, a trusted mechanic, a trusted accountant, a, tr a trusted lawyer, right? You have people that have specific expertise. Now, think to not lawyers and mechanics and, and dentists and, and tax attorneys. Think about web development and what happens. Suddenly, it's just a whole sea of names with no expertise, just different people that do different kinds of things, what have you. And then you think about your agency or your freelance work and you go, yeah, I, I kind of message that I do everything, right? Well, if you do everything, you do nothing, right? If you do everything, you're never memorable. For a specific thing. Now, I, I want to tell you a story here because um, I had a friend who, I still have that friend, who knew one specific expertise. They knew it because I asked them to learn it. I said to them, listen, I have a lot of people that call me up for advice. And often when they call for that advice, I know that the answer I'm going to give them is a specific tool, a product, a SaaS product called Recurly. And I said, have you ever heard of it? Do you know it? They said no. So I showed it to them and they, they started digging into it and they started learning it. And they learned it enough so that every other time that I answered people's questions and I recommended Recurly, the next logical question someone was going to ask me was, do you know anyone who knows how to do this? And I said, yes, actually I do. And I Oh, did Chris um, freeze on us? Well, he is at WordCamp Europe um, currently. So he is in his hotel in Berlin. Um, so we'll give him just a few minutes and see if he can join us again. It's funny that we're back on this topic and I saw Sarah chime in. Um, I mean, it seems to be a, another recurring theme, right? Just making sure you have a specialty and and I mean, this is the exact thing, developing a specific expertise. It's easier to be top of mind. It's easier to, to uh, you know, have somebody land on you when they're ready to make that decision that pertains to exactly what you do. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, it makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, again, we, we kind of go back to it's It's funny how we have 10 different people on 10 different subjects, but they all really touch on a lot of the same things. Yeah. Just that just goes to show, uh, I, I think we're on the right track, right? We have... We're, we're all on the right track. We've got a bunch of uh, successful business people out there. We've got a bunch of experts in their, in their industries, but you know, a lot of the same themes resonate regardless of, of what you decide to do. Um, Absolutely. Hey, Chris, I let everyone know that you were in Berlin at the hotel. So um, yeah. The, the Wi-Fi dropped out for a second. No um, problem. Okay. I'm going to share this screen again, see if we get right back to where we were. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, Lindsay, you had heard me talk about Recurly, is that right? I sure did, yeah. And I was telling you that I would love to tell you that that's a single incident, except that for uh, multiple years, I've had people call me and ask me about membership plugins and between and, and who could, you know, once they ask and understand uh, which plugin to use, they always ask the next question, which is, do you know someone who could do it? And again, I've had three freelancers that I recommend over and over and over for years and send them a ton of work. One particular freelancer, I think had maybe one helper and him. And uh, I think I sent him over $100,000 in a single year of work, right? This is because when someone has specific expertise, it makes it a lot easier for me to recommend them. And I'm not the only recommender out there, right? Every single person you know, if they're talking about something, and they're explaining, I use this product, or I, I use this software, or I use this approach or strategy, often the very next question is, do you know someone who can do that? And sometimes the answer is us, and sometimes the answer is someone else. But for your freelance business or your agency business, developing that expertise allows other people to remember you. 
Again, this is something you likely know. You may or may not be implementing it well in your business. All right, I'm going to come back in here and take us to the next one, the next truth that you already know. And that is being an expert in why is more useful than how. Now, again, I want you to think about one of those trusted professionals you have in your life. Could be a dentist, could be the person that runs the daycare for your child, could be uh, the, you know, the, the um, attorney that you talk to all the time or your, the tax prep person, uh, your mechanic, right? Think of a professional. You rarely want to ask them the hows. How do I do this? How do I do this? How do I do this? Why? Because you want them to do it. You, you don't even want to know you know, the, the details of how they do their work. But understanding why helps you trust them. When they say, well, you could do this or you could do that, but I recommend this, right? Some of you have incorporated your business and incorporating, you had to decide between an LLC and an S Corp. Now, the actual mechanics of registering your business probably don't engage you. But when you're talking to an expert in that space, and you want to know why to choose which one, the person who can articulate that well is someone that you say, okay, I, li I like them, I trust them. And by the way, they gave me answers without a lot of technical gobbledygook that I didn't understand. They didn't make me feel stupid. They didn't talk down to me. But it's the why that grabs you, right? Because they can articulate why. So when you're an expert in something, being able to explain the why is far more important than the how. And I find that a lot of freelancers and agencies get so caught up in thinking about the how that then it just can't help but come out of their mouth. So they start talking about the how and they lose that, that ability to connect with people. Now, why is this so important in networking? Because if you're good at talking about whys, you're, you're talking about things other people can understand and then they can explain it to someone else. When you get into talking about hows, you demonstrate your expertise but no one else remembers or knows how to even share that with someone else, right? And so you fall off the, 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 that ability for, for people to, to share your name with others. Now, I'm gonna end with one last thing here uh, in terms of the things you already know, and that is that there's nothing more powerful than consistency and persistence. And consistency is all about uh, doing something regularly. Persistence is all about not giving up. And networking is one of those things that requires both consistency and persistence. Like I started with, you know that you don't want to do this once every six months or every four months or once every year. You know you want to be networking all the time. And yet, if you're not an extrovert, that can feel stressful. It can feel hard. Uh, you may feel, you may have a cultural bias to not talk about yourself, right? Um, there are a lot of different reasons why we just, this is just hard to do. But once we learn to do it and do it often and well, um, it will pay dividends. This is just a numbers game, right? So what I wanna do uh, with the rest of our time is give you some tips on how to do this effectively. And of course, if you know me, you know that the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that you have to learn to tell stories. You have to learn to make your past work interesting. Now, if your past work is we built a website for a nonprofit, and that's how you tell that story, that's not interesting. And no one is going to be interested in hearing it, much less remembering it and being able to share it with other people. Now, why do you tell stories, right? You tell stories because they're the easiest thing for people to remember, especially if it's an interesting story. So what you have to do is find the kernel, find the thing that is, you know, you, they started with a pain and then you helped them solve some puzzle and then they ended up with some gain. And so you walk that narrative through and people are like, wow, but you don't have to start with pain, problem resolution and gain. That's, that's, a, that's a tried structure. You can think about that way, but you don't have to tell the story that way, right? You can tell the story starting with success. Here's the gain, right? We just helped the client generate 45 thousand dollars worth of new leads from sources they'd never had before immediately someone looks at you and goes how'd you do that well we created a whole series of microsites what's a microsite right like the the way you tell the story engages someone and invariably if you do this right it doesn't even feel like networking you're simply telling a story about hey so what have you been up to oh well i gotta tell you right? we've been working with this client and we just did this and they go 
how'd that work? And tell me more about this. And they start asking you questions. And by the time you're done with the story, they say something like, you know, I think we need that too. And you have just generated business. Or they say, you know what? I think I know someone who needs that. Here, let me, let me go pull someone else in and tell them that story again, right? Learning how to tell the stories of your past work means you have to dig into sometimes what happened long before you got there, right? You may be coming in and working on a project, but the project itself may have started months ago. It may have started years ago. It may, you may be working on the third or fourth iteration of a project where someone has already hired several other agencies. They've tried to do other work. They've tried to integrate with lots of other solutions. And that becomes part of the interesting story, right? What have you been working on? Well, it's really interesting. We have this client who has already spent a million dollars with other people and every single time it's failed. And we're now on the cusp of launching something where for the first time in just six weeks, we were able to build out what they burned a year and a half on. And someone goes, uh, what, what do you, what'd you do? And what'd you do in six weeks? Like, and how did it work that in six weeks you got it done when they'd spent over a year working? And how much did you charge? Like immediately people are going, tell me more about this story. But if you say, well, you know what? We built this you know, form. We did this add-on to a form plugin and, and set up a bunch of web pages. That's not interesting or compelling, all right? So learning how to tell, our, tell the story of our work in a way that's interesting will get other people to say, tell me more about that. The second thing is, hey, make intros. This is not hard to do. Let me connect one person with another, right? If you connect people regularly, right? If you, if, when you meet someone, you say something like, hi, I'm Chris, what's your name? What do you do? What have you been up to lately? What's been interesting? And you're asking questions about a person to understand what they're doing. And then once you grasp enough to tell their story, right? What's interesting about them, you can turn around to someone else and say, hey, Bill, I wanna introduce you to Susie. Susie's really interesting because Susie's just done and you go ahead and tell it. Now Susie's feeling like, wow, thank you, you were listening, but you made two connections, right? And these people go, oh, thanks. Now when one of them says, I need someone, but I don't know who to recommend, right? Uh, I don't know who to find, who to help me with this. They think back to the connectors in their life. And if you're a connector, they'll call you and they'll say, hey, I'm looking for someone that knows this. Do you know anyone that does it? Now, the upside is if you do it, you can say, actually, that, that's what my company does. Or you can connect them to someone else and you sustain that notion of being a connector. The more you connect people with people, the more you get the first shot at, hey, can you recommend someone for this? Which could very well be new work for you. Now, a lot of you, a lot of you do amazing things, except how you end conversations. When you end a conversation, you sound like this. All right, see you later. Goodbye, take care. Instead of saying, hey, uh, before you go, did you know, you don't ask the did you know question right? If you learn to end conversations with, did you know, and you're going, what's the, did you know? Well, here's the thing. Every one of your clients hired you to do one thing. It might be building a website. It might be building a, a you know, a, doing some SEO work. It might be doing a Facebook campaign. It's something, but it's one thing. And they may not know whatsoever at all, anything about the fact that you do a second thing or a third thing or a fourth thing. I have a buddy that uh, spoke earlier today right, who builds web applications, but he also builds mobile apps. You can imagine the people that hire him to build a website don't even know that he builds mobile apps. And so part of the work we started doing uh, a couple years ago, right, was having his account manager at key points end their conversations with customers by saying, hey, did you know that we also do web uh, mobile apps? And the customer says, no, I didn't know that at all. In fact, we were just talking about uh, building one, but we, we didn't even know who to talk to. When you ask the, did you know, right? You can create more options for work, collaboration, uh, projects, simply because people didn't know what you were doing. Another question you can ask is, do you know, as in, do you know someone in your organization that could also use what we've just done for you? Again, this feels difficult because it feels a little salesy and yet, 
if you've just finished doing a project, I worked with an agency that was doing a project. I brought the agency to one of my other friends and I worked with that agency to shape what they were doing. And when they finished doing the work, right, they had created just a set of forms that were working with their customers. I mean, the whole thing was just perfect and elegant. And I said, well, did you ask the company if they had other departments where they could use this? And they said, no, we didn't do that at all. You go, well, the, the, the client you just work with is thrilled at what you've done. All you have to do is ask, do you know anyone else in your organization, especially if the organization you're working in is large, do you know anyone else in your organization that would benefit from the work we just did here? And if they say yes, now you're networking on a whole different level because you're leveraging the relationship that you already have. So they say, yeah, you should talk to Sam over in this department. And you go, great. Hey, Sam, I was just talking to Frank and Frank, this is what we did for Frank. And Frank mentioned that we should probably talk to you about this. Now you have a warm lead, not a cold lead, right? So learning how to ask for referrals without feeling ashamed, feeling bad, feeling like, oh, this is so, this is just counterintuitive to me. Learning how to do it regularly is critical. Now, the more advanced one and my favorite of all of them, I told you a little about the agency, a very small agency that developed a little expertise with Recurly. I've sent them tons and tons of work over the last several years. Anytime someone talks to me about subscriptions, I often punt to Recurly and then I say, hey, you should talk to this agency who builds Recurly stuff. But what they did was they went further than that. They didn't just develop the know-how to figure out how Recurly works. They built the glue. They built a small plugin that literally connects WordPress and Recurly, which means every time someone comes to them, they, right, can connect the dots faster because of the integration that they built. But it also means that they can get references from Recurly because Recurly notices that they're sending people to Recurly, right? And so you start seeing this back and forth collaboration simply because everybody in the, uh, re everyone in the network and in the relationship is helping one another grow. Now, this was specifically true a couple of years ago at an event that Adrian mentioned I run called Cabo Press, where I connected a service agency with a product company. And the, the service agency said, oh, well, we also have some, a, a store with themes. And so talking to the product guy, the product guy said, well, we have this plugin that does you know, this kind of stuff in e-commerce. And so they started building, and the, this, the, this little agency started building some themes that integrated with the product. Now, when they sold the theme, they were recommending the product. And when people started buying the product, they said, oh, and if you want a good theme, they recommend the theme. And you build that kind of collaboration simply because someone's willing to do the deeper work to actually build a little glue that connects the dots to make it easier for agencies to pitch products and products to have partnerships with agencies. I know we are getting to our time, so I'm gonna wrap this up simply by saying, uh, I work at Liquid Web and I couldn't end this time without talking about the last example of networking and collaboration. Um, you may or may not have seen a press release that went out today where uh, one of the things I run is our WooCommerce platform. And today we announced that we were doing partnerships with folks like Affiliate WP and uh, Merge WP. But Affiliate WP is a product in and of itself. It's a product that makes it easy to do affiliate, uh, build affiliate relationships and manage affiliates. Uh, and it integrates well with WooCommerce. Now, the way in which I was able to build that relationship and connect those dots was because I knew the owner and the co-founder of that business, right? So I could call Pippin up and say, Pippin, you have a product, I have a product. My product would be better if it had your product bundled with it. So I'd like to work out some sort of relationship where I embed your product into my product and, you, and, I, and I pass you back those customers. So any new customer of mine is also a customer of yours. That kind of collaboration allows his business to grow from my customers and my business to grow because I have a more robust product. A lot of times we try and figure out how to use networking to just help us. How can I make my business bigger and better? And the real value of networking is when you can start making relationships and collaborations work for both of you right? And that's something you know already, right? It's a lot better and easier if me bundling them makes them more 
customers and more money. And them bundling with me makes me a better product. And again, allows me to woo new customers. So if we're talking about the one thing you have to start right away, and you've heard many other things you have to start right away, but if it were me, if, based on you know my choice, my history, I would tell you there is incredible power in networking. And it's one of the most important things you need to do. And of course, you know this already. You need to do it all the time. Thank you very much.